Hello again, Internet. Astro with Roro here. There's something so tantalizing about guiding. Many of us become infatuated with the challenge of seeing a flat guideline and incredibly small error rates, tweaking and tuning our gear, striving for perfection. But how much guiding do you actually need? What if your guide numbers look good, but your stars still aren't round? What is good guiding? And are you in the realm of diminishing returns? Unlike many other questions in this hobby, these questions are actually very easy to answer. Yes, your guiding is negatively impacting your images, but don't go and throw out your gear just yet. You may be surprised at how little that impact is, depending on the skies that you shoot under and the size of your telescope. If you end up finding this video helpful, then consider subscribing or support me on my Patreon, link in the description. I've put together a cheat sheet so that you can see if your guiding is damaging your imaging quality by more than 5% of your telescope's theoretical maximum under three different scene conditions. These different conditions are poor seeing, like you would expect in a major city with lots of turbulent airflow and large temperature gradients, where I've estimated the scene to be around 4 arc seconds. Next is average to good skies that I think would be what most hobby astrophotographers experience of around 2 arc seconds. And while not the best, very good skies of around 1 arc seconds. Now, before we jump into the cheat sheet, some quick caveats. This assumes that you have diffraction limited optics, that you're sampling correctly, and your guiding RMS errors are similar in both your right ascension and your declination. We'll talk more about the impacts of uneven RA and deck errors later on in this video. This is what I think the answer to what is good guiding should be for telescopes with an aperture between 50 millimeters and 300 millimeters, or around 12 inches. These numbers are in total RMS in arc seconds. So make sure your PhD2 is set to that and not set to show value in pixels. After seeing this cheat sheet, you can see that if you're shooting in poor scene conditions, an error of up to 1.3 arc seconds RMS won't make much of a difference, even if you're using a really large aperture telescope. For good skies, you want to be guiding between about half an arc second and one arc second, depending on your aperture. And for great skies, you can see just how much better your guiding needs to be as your telescope's aperture increases. For a moderate refractor, you can still get great results with about half an arc second guiding, but if your aperture is over 100 millimeters, you really want guide numbers under 0.4 and preferably low 0.3s. Interestingly enough, focal length doesn't matter at all, so long as you've already made sure that your camera's sampling is matched well to your telescope. If you'd like to know more about sampling, then make sure to leave a comment and subscribe so that I know to dive more into that topic in the future. Okay, so to summarize, if you have a small refractor, you can get away with honestly between one and one and a half arc seconds of guide errors. Medium refractors and small reflectors will require between half an arc second and one arc second. And for large aperture telescopes, you really wanna aim for a maximum of half an arc second preferably better, especially under great skies where they can really benefit from very low error rates. So now that you know what your total RMS should be, what happens if your right ascension and declination errors aren't equal? Total RMS is calculated by this equation. So if you want to hit one arc second total RMS, each of your axis errors actually needs to be around 0.7 arc seconds. If your right ascension is 0.9, then your declination needs to be 0.43 to compensate. But this is going to introduce another issue. That is, uneven error rates will cause your stars to no longer look round. In fact, you can use this formula to calculate how round they would be versus a perfect circle. In our example with error rates of 0.9 on RA and 0.43 on deck, we would have stars that are 35% elongated along the RA axis. 
These kinds of issues are able to be somewhat addressed in post-processing with deconvolution tools that use point spread functions, like, yes, Blur Exterminator, but as always, it's better to avoid these issues in the first place if possible. So if one of your axes errors are quite a bit higher than the other, it might be worthwhile to focus on that high error axis and honestly not worry too much about the smaller one at all. Personally, I feel it's far more important to have round stars than to chase marginal detail improvements, as star shape is a much more obvious aberration. Now, if you'd like to find out what guide numbers you need to hit with your exact gear, then I've actually created a calculator on my website, which I've linked to in the description, that will give you everything you need to know. Simply add in your aperture, your focal length, your camera's pixel size, and see how your guiding compares. In fact, you can even play around with the sky quality and cap the guiding impact to see what you should aim for in different locations. If you like these kinds of tools and videos, then leave a like or a comment, or consider subscribing to my channel or supporting me on Patreon, which is also linked in the description. I hope that you've enjoyed this video or learned something new. My name is Rowan, this is Astro with Roro, and clear skies.